Hi. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you're tuning in from, welcome to another edition of SIC Maui Talk Stories. And I'm Seychelle, and I'll be hosting again today. And we have another really fun topic. And you'll see my dog, oops, my dog wandering around in the background, because <clears throat> that's what he likes to do. Um, today we want to talk about cross-training for paddlers. So um, I'm going to just jump right in because I already got a bunch of live viewers, so that's awesome. So this is obviously going to be a very popular topic. Um, you might want to have a, a notebook nearby. You might want to take some notes. I'm not going to be going over any uh, exercises specifically. This is just like a a discussion, some advice. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I'm going to do my best to keep my eye on the um, comments bar. And so, you know, let me know where you're tuning in from. Say hi. And then, of course, as always throughout, or even just now, if you know what your questions are, put your questions in the comment box so that I can answer them um, and we can talk about um, yeah, some of the best ways to stay fit, to complement your paddling, to be able to train through the winter, which is, I know, what a lot of you are all going through right now, and yeah, I'm kind of rubbing it in a little bit, like, <laughs> tank top, it's like 70 and sunny here in Florida, and, uh, you all should just come visit Florida and paddle with me here. So, <clears throat> yeah, so this is for, you know, winter training, land-based training, but this is even for like when you can paddle year round, it's really great to be able to do um, or to commit to doing some of your training, not just paddling. I know a lot of paddlers are like, I just paddle because that's like the one thing I found that I love to do. So we'll talk a little bit about that because um, doing some cross training can <clears throat> keep you fit over the winter, but it can also help you to be a more well-rounded athlete. Um, some things are easier actually to learn and assimilate in your body on land because the board is an unstable surface. And so there's already a lot happening as soon as we get on the board. So if we're trying to then teach our body something <clears throat> while it's unstable, it's best to learn it stable and then practice it unstable. So yeah, lots of good reasons to cross train. And then just like I always preface everything with, there is no um there's no exact right or wrong, right? It's like there's no exact right or wrong way to paddle. There's ways that are maybe faster, more effective or safer for your body. Um but but every body, every person's a little bit different and there's not like you know, with cross training, do this, don't do that. Um for the most part, depending on who you are and where you are and and so, like, the first questions that I ask, you know, my athletes when I'm giving them cross-training, um, when I'm giving them cross-training workouts to do is, like, you know, what do you enjoy doing? Uh, what excites you? What feels good for your body when you're doing it and or after you're doing it? Um what is actually going to keep you active, right? Those are some of the things that you want to be doing for cross training. Yes, I want to talk about some of the ones that I think are preferential. I want to talk about some of my favorites. Um, but it's like, what's the thing that you're actually going to do besides paddling? Because that should be part of your cross training. Um, I haven't seen any comments come through. So although I'm sure if y'all couldn't hear me, you would have been saying it by now. So hopefully y'all can hear me have new headphones. Um, so a couple of things I look for specifically in <clears throat> cross training is um, one of the things that, that I look for to, in, to preferential what I'm going to do for cross training is if possible, activities that I'm actually outside or I'm actually moving and propelling my body, right? So I preference actually running outside versus running on a treadmill 
I would preference cross country skiing over a ski erg, right? So like I love ergs, I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Um and machines are great when you need to be on a machine. Great, you know. Uh but if possible, what are activities where you're actually moving your body, not just simulating that movement? Because that's gonna be um really help that's gonna help translate better to your paddling. So um then the other the other thing, second thing I would I would consider is is it a full body movement? Right? Paddling is a full body movement. I mean it's head to toe, it's legs core back. Um and so when I'm choosing cross training, I wanna choose activities that are, you know, similar full body or similar muscle groups. Um, as paddling. So one of the best, although ironically one that I've never done, <laughs> is cross-country skiing because it does really simulate that set and pull momentum that you are doing with your um, with your hips when you are Paddling, it's using a lot of similar muscle groups. One day I'll try cross-country skiing. I'd love to hear in the comments if anybody here, if you love cross-country skiing or you love any of these ones that I'm going to mention. Um, I personally really love running. Um, that's that's definitely one of my favorite um, cross-training activities. And doing it outdoors, of course. And their swimming is one of the best, full body, really connects you to body mechanics, to moving, you know, body propulsion, and it's one that you can do year-round because up north you have pools indoors. And um, then, there's, then there's the ergs, right? So there's the ski erg, there's the rowing erg. I actually really love the rowing erg because, again, Full body, legs, core, back, um, just like I am when I'm paddling, and actually in that order too. So, um, so ergs are great, and then you know biking's great too. Biking is kind of one of the last ones on the list, and if you love biking, great. It's just that for me, it's like it's not as much full body, and I guess running really technically isn't as much full body either, but there's still more posture and core, and maybe I'm, you guys could correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not a cyclist, but to me it, it doesn't feel as, it, that it translates as well to those two things that I talked about, which is um, full body and similar muscle groups in choosing cross training. So that's cross training for cardio. What are your favorites? I want to hear which ones do you love that I missed. Um, Maybe you love dancing. Maybe you love, um, I don't know, tell me what you love doing for cardio, cross training. Um, and in terms of like what type of, you know, cardio to be doing, you can do tr similar training, similar intervals as you would do on your board, right? The best type of cross training activity is actually going to be one that you could perform in a similar way that you would be performing on your board in terms of intensity, in terms of heart rate and breathing, respiration, all of that. Um, however, if you're not there with any other discipline, you can slowly build up to, right? You don't want to like, if you've never been on a rower, you, you could paddle for an hour, no problem. You don't want to just jump on a rower and think I'm going to row for an hour, no problem. <laughs> That's really going to hurt. So you definitely, if it's something new that you haven't trained before, a new discipline, rowing, biking, running, swimming, you're going to start <clears throat> at a percentage of what you're used to doing on the board and you're going to build yourself up. And or another fun way that I like to do it is I'll mix it up, right? So like if I am using machines, in the gym or even like some outside and some in the gym, like you could do 20 minutes on the rower, 20 minutes on a bike, 20 minutes on a treadmill, right? So you're not like an hour on something you've never done before. So you always want to listen to your body um, and build up slowly, which is over time more fast than building up too quickly and straining and getting injuries and then having to rest and recover and 
all of that. So if you're not sure about how you would build up on a new discipline, that's something that you would want to seek advice from a coach. Um, there's lots of fantastic ones out there. So um, in the winter, typically for most of us, this is our off season. I'm not sure if anyone's watching from uh, – oh, Carrie. So I'm just reading. The footage keeps cutting in and out. I hope Is anybody else – Am I freezing a lot? I hope not. Let me know. I'm just going to keep going because she's the first one to say something. So, um, so things that for most of us, this is the winter. And so it's off season. And if it's not off season for you, then you're going to be training very differently this time of year. But um, I'm going to speak mostly to Northern Hemisphere paddlers at the moment and say that in the off season or in the winter season, you're going to be primarily be doing base building, so really low aerobic level work. Lots of your low and slow, level two, a little bit of level three. Um, <clears throat> if you don't know your levels, just, you know, think that, that lower, like, go all day pace. And um, because you really want to be building up aerobic, which is aerobic is the use of oxygen to produce energy to keep moving. Um, base, what you draw from when you start training um, and pulling in higher levels. So the other things I like to work on in the off season in the winter are um, so aerobic base, so that low level, which you can do on, it doesn't have to be paddling, it can be any discipline of cardio. Um, and that's one thing that's really important is is your breathing, the way that you're breathing. So that's something that if you haven't, and I did two talks on breathing, did not three, two or three. I've done a lot of talks now, talk stories um, last year on the SIC Maui page on breathing specifically. Um, if that's not something you're working on in your training, this is a great time to start doing that because you're at those lower levels of, of training where you can really think, about and especially if you're not on the board and you're not thinking about your technique you can be thinking about how you're breathing and working on your respiration so that's a great thing to be working on cross training this time of year um, nasal breathing especially go back and watch some of the talk stories that i did on on athletic breathing on the ssc ssc maui page or youtube channel and then um and technique this is a great time to be experimenting with Um, this is a great time to be experimenting with improving your technique, trying different things in your technique, maybe getting some coaching, maybe watching some videos, doing some video analysis with some coaches, and really trying to make some adaptations while you're in that low and slow phase, when you're not trying to go fast. <clears throat> so, um, again, that's if you're still paddling, but... Um, yeah, that's a great thing to be doing this time of year and um, doing drills, paddling with resistance. That can slow you down. Um, and because this is not the time of year where you're going to be, um, unless you have a peak event, unless this is a peak time of year for you, this is not going to be when you're feeling tip top, when you're feeling, when you're worried about speed, when you're worried about intensity, you're not. You're just thinking about aerobic base. Um, I'm going to talk in a minute about some other focuses. Um, but in terms of cardio, it's base, and then it's, you know, breathing, and it's technique, and um, improving on the lower end. So um, I saw a few comments. I'm just going to pause for a moment and read those. So... Yeah, common to do the ski erg and rower. Mm hmm. Definitely. Um, I'm sorry for those of you that it's freezing. I hope that's not everyone. I hope it's coming through enough that you can hear me. Um, I just, I just the Wi-Fi here. I had trouble last week. It just sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not. So, um, so yeah. If you do have questions, comments, these are great ones that um, 
that are coming through, let me know. I'm happy to answer those. So let's see. The other main category that I like to focus for cross training, and again, this is off season, but this is throughout the whole season, I'm not just paddling. There's training that I'm doing off the board. And for me, a big part of that is strength training. So um, even though I'm strength training the whole season, in the off season, I'm focusing more on strength training. I'm focusing more. It's a great time to think more about your body mechanics, drilling in, right, the technique of how your body moves because, again, that's one of those things, especially body mechanics, that's a lot easier to figure out what you're doing on land, on st stable surface, before you take it to the water. So strength and body mechanics, that foundational work is really helpful to be doing this time of year and you can do it indoors in the gym and I know a lot of paddlers like I don't like the gym and I like going indoors um but try it you know and if you don't love it you don't have to do it but you might love it and it might really help start to improve your paddling so um so um even though I'm always doing some strength, I'm putting more energy into my strength workouts than I am my cardio workouts over the winter months. Um, and that's not to try to bulk up. It's to try to become more stable, to have better body mechanics, do more recruitment of muscles so that it's easier for me when I get back on the board to be able to engage to recruit those muscles. So, um, uh with a lot of my clients that I write training programs for, I usually in season, they're doing only two strength sessions a week and then off season, they're doing three strength sessions a week. So um, that's a quick plug, I guess. Um, I, I do have a wait list for training programs starting in May. So if you're curious about how you would be structuring your training, your intervals, when to be working on your technique, your aerobic base, what the heck does that even mean, um, and what are some of these body mechanics and, and movements that I'd be training on land uh, versus on the water, I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can find me on my website, SeychelleSup.com, and reach out. Um, I'm only taking women at the moment, but I do try to help the guys that reach out as much as possible. So I love hearing from you no matter what. And uh, if you have some serious goals for 2022, I'd love to hear what they all are and, and see if I could if I could help you after my maternity leave. So sometime in May. Um, so yeah, I saw a couple more questions come in. I'm going to pause for one more second to read those. And then I'm going to talk about what are some of the strength moves that I, uh, that I focus on. So, yeah, so Dino's asking the ski erg, do you think cross-country skiing would be better training biomechanically than a rowing erg? The answer is yes. That might have been one of the things that you missed because I was breaking up, but cross-country skiing was actually the very first cross-training activity that I mentioned for people in the winter um, in terms of body, you know, um, similar muscle groups, body movement, full body activity that you can be doing outdoors yeah totally um and angela says you're hearing 95 percent of what i'm saying okay cool good <laughs> and if there's something that you're like you don't again just reach out send me a comment send me an email send me a dm um and uh if i don't because if i don't get to it here or if you didn't hear something i'm happy to repeat that so um so yeah the last thing that i just want to talk about i am going to be doing in a couple more weeks, a full talk story on specifically strength training. So I'm not going to go into detail right now on strength training, even though it is one of my favorite ways to do cross training for paddling um, or for any sport. Um, I'm a big, big fan of strength training. Um, I'm just going to give you a couple of tidbits of my favorites right now. And if this is interesting to you, Come back for the next talk story, and we're going to dive in deeper. 
to some of these. So as I've mentioned a couple of times, paddling the three main areas, legs, core, back, right? Um, and I do think about them in that order. <laughs> and I do train the other areas of my body. Yes, I do upper body. Yes, I do chest and, and, and arms. And, uh, but, the, but the primary focus is legs, core, back, um, body mechanics to help paddle. So similar with um, similar with the way I would think about which cardio I want to cross train with, again, I want to think about full body movement and I think about similar muscle groups. So um, foundational work, I'm reading my notes here. Okay. So for legs, a few of my favorites, since I know that's going to be one of the questions that you ask. Um, Full, again, full body, similar muscles. So I love deadlifts, single leg deadlifts, um, all kinds of squats and single leg squats and split squats, um, glute bridges, extensions, um, just a lot of activation in the backs of the legs because that's where the biggest driving muscle, the biggest muscle mover in our body is the glutes and that driving up. So. That's a really those are really helpful ones and um, single legs of course because we're unstable we want to do unilateral work as well um, yeah and those are some of the like main ones but if you're not familiar with those exercises get somebody to have eyes on you to train you to show you how to engage properly because again body mechanics the way your body's moving um, hinging if you watch my talk on hip hinges. Talked about deadlifts and kettlebell swings, how you can practice those to help your hip hinging. Um, it's really important, and it's also important for the safety of your body as well. So um, for core, all-time favorite, well, not my all-time favorite to do, but all-time favorite to um, that for training core stability and anti-rotation is, this is rotation, but core, core trains anti-rotation is our planks and all variations of planks. So planks, of course, you have your standard forearm or um, high plank variations. I mean, there's side planks, there's planks with twists, side planks with twists, side planks with leg lifts, planks with arm taps, planks with, there's, planks are awesome. Because um, training your core stability, which I talked about oh, only on the women's group last week, um, training your core stability and your strength of your rotators and anti-rotational in the tor in the torso. Um, so hanging uh, would be my next favorite. Ab, ex, or core exercises, I shouldn't say ab, core exercises would be anything where you're actually hanging because you've got that engagement top to bottom for the whole torso. Um, so those could be knees to chest, legs lift, legs over, right? But that hanging position with that proper shoulder engagement is going to be a great way and if you can't do hanging and core at the same time just practice some hanging um breath oh any and and every movement every single movement that you do is a core movement when you focus on the way that you're breathing and the way that you're engaging so uh like currently right now for example i'm pretty pregnant. Uh, I'm not doing a whole lot of core work, but every single thing that I do is core work because of the way I'm engaging, because of the way I'm breathing. And that's true for your, actually your cardio as well. So um, don't just think I have to do ab exercises. It is a lot about the way that you're moving your um, breathing that makes something, anything core. So um, back. Um, rows, pulls, pull-ups are some of my favorites. Single arm again, that unilateral single arm rows, single arm pulls, straight arm pulls, um, lat, think lat, 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 lat. Um, and then some people like to think, oh, I got to strengthen my low back, but really I would just strengthen your core stabilization so that you maintain that neutral spine. Um, so, yeah, I already mentioned this. I do do arms. I do shoulders. I do, I mean, I do all the all the things, but they're, like, as accessory 
lifts to those major muscle groups. So um, ones that are really helpful for body mechanics and technique are hinges, proper hinges. You can watch my whole talk on that from a few weeks ago. IYTs, those are ones you definitely want to make sure that somebody's in helping you engage properly. That's going to help get you out of your traps uh, and out of your upper traps and into your lower traps, the middle of your back, as opposed to being dominant up here. Um, foundation training, I'm doing a whole live talk tomorrow on Instagram on foundation training. That is amazing for spine health, um, body mechanics. Any balance work that you love doing um, is, fun, is a great way to cross train. Um, so that can be doing things on a BOSU ball, that can be doing practicing on an on a Indo or balance or Kumo board. Um, and any rehab work that you've been given over the years <laughs> from injuries is always a great time to be doing that. But especially um, when you feel like it's, yeah, it's just a great time to be putting all of those things into practice. So that's pretty much what I got for today. I'm going to check once more for questions. Um, ask me your questions. Anything to do with training, cross-training. Um, and yeah, reach out if you have questions about coaching. Um, you can search SIC Maui Talk Stories on Facebook or YouTube for all of the chats that I've already done that I was talking that I mentioned. Um, I just want to say a huge thank you to SIC for having us here. Uh, if you're watching the replay, I do go back and check comments so you can ask questions there, and I'll try and remember to answer them but if you don't hear from me reach out you know directly and um but yeah thanks sic for having me for supporting this platform to do these talk stories i know y'all are really loving them i really love them too and we're doing about every couple of weeks i love hearing your topics what you want to hear about requests those are always really helpful and yeah thank you all for being here for sharing your uh, the last 30 minutes or so with me, and I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, your evening, and I'll see you really soon. <laughs>